everybody, this is Hannah and thank you for joining me today. I have another video about selling your junk jewelry and we're going to talk about how to sell broken beaded jewelry. So beaded necklaces, beaded bracelets, I've got an assortment here that we'll kind of go through and talk about. I've got some broken necklaces backed up and then I also have examples of you know finished little lots that I have for sale and we're going to kind of go through how to go about this. Um, I really believe that there's money sitting on the table if you have junk jewelry like this. There are a lot of people including myself looking for craft type stuff to make. I also design my own jewelry and I love vintage glass beads. I also do educational videos about it. So I'm always looking for that type of stuff um, and a lot of other things as well. I'm interested in a lot of different type of artisan and vintage jewelry. So there are other people like me um, that want to buy this type of stuff. So most people may throw all this stuff that's broken or maybe some beads are worn they're just going to put it to the side forget about it or sell it in a big huge junk lot um, i've bought lots like that before poshmark ebay etsy anywhere you can really buy and sell facebook marketplace live selling platforms really anywhere of course, you can sell like that if you just don't have the time or energy to sort things. Sure, I mean, you can still make money that way, but I'm about maximizing my profits. You don't have to put too much time or effort into this. You could probably even sit in front of the TV, watch a show, and, you know, take beaded, broken beaded stuff apart and then put it in, in a bag and then you're ready to take pictures, list it, you're good to go. But I've got some tips on how to maximize that and how to get it sold. So, you're thinking about your customer, your customer is, are craft type people. I think it's better to sell in smaller lots, like a couple of ounces, so like Here's one example. I have a bag of all faceted glass beads and they have this luster appearance to it. Some of them sort of have an AB coating, but most of them don't. They have this kind of peacock iridescent finish to them. There's a couple of seed beads. Um, they just, they look great together. There's gold, there's purple, there's blue. It just looks really appealing to me. And I think someone would really like these types of beads. It's important to be as descriptive as you can. I wouldn't think too hard about it, but think about the types of beads, the, the general size. So what I will do is when I go to photograph, I'll take a couple beads, not all of them, and measure them. And I, this is like a beadsmith uh, digital calipers. And you just put the bead in there and measure it. You can also, I like using these measuring mat, mats. They're just like little craft mats and lay some beads out that way to measure them also like to lay a coin or something to kind of show compare the sizes of them visually so people kind of know the size and also it's really important that you weigh them i have just a very uh simple scale I actually got this like in the kitchen section at walmart you can get them online uh, but make sure you get a scale that can actually go, like take very small measurements. So this takes 0 0.005 ounce and up. You wanna make sure it takes those decimal uh, 
decimal numbers. Very important. It's like here I have this two and a half ounce. Also I have this bag of jet black glass beads, four ounces. So these are two that I have listed currently. Now you can also sell in larger lots. I have done that before and I will show some screenshots of things I've sold in the past. So I had this really large lot. It was about three pounds and it was a huge assortment of beads. Could I have made more money if I made smaller lots? Possibly because people are always looking for lightweight plastic beads to use, especially in kids crafts or maybe they want to make jewelry that's very lightweight. So a lot of these were like big chunky beads that were novelty shaped, like fruit shapes, Christmas shapes. Um, they were kind of cheaper looking. A lot of them maybe had some wear to them. Some of them were even painted. Someone had painted them. And I just decided I didn't want to take my time with it. I was fine with making a three pound lot and using descriptive words is very important. So I put kids crafts, I put VBS, which stands for Vacation Bible School. Um, a lot of people do crafts with kids during those. You could also do like summer camp, um, things like that, lightweight beads. And I put a few keywords to kind of describe type, like the type of beads. So I put acrylic, I put lucite. I think there were some wood beads in there just to give people a general idea. I just threw it in a bag, took pictures, and then it's hard to see through a plastic bag. So I did open it up and take pictures in it so that you could uh, see pretty well. I want to talk about how to take these necklaces apart and sort of, you know, just quick ways to think about sorting these beads. Now, I find it very meditative and relaxing to sort beads. So, you know, I think a lot of people do just like sorting and, and looking at the colors and the shapes. Um, I don't know, just something relaxing about it. So this was actually a personal necklace that I've had forever, probably 15 years or more. And these beads were hand painted and they're, they've yellowed and they flaked off. So I could restring this and leave these beads off, or I've actually considered cutting it up and um, just, you know, sorting these beads and either using them myself or selling them. So super easy to do this. What you wanna do is get a small container that will hold all the beads. You just need scissors or this is a side wire cutter. I do actually use these to cut, cut necklaces because a lot of them will use either the kind of the plastic monofilament. Sometimes it's wire. Um, if it's cotton string, it will probably be easier to use this. This is more first, you know, harder, sturdier materials. So what I do is I just clip it off and you just take the beads off. It's super quick and easy. If you have trouble with this really long string, you can just cut it again, make it shorter so it's easier to handle, and then get the rest of the beads out. Now, a lot of times these clasps are in a uh, decent condition and this has some verdigris on it. So I'll probably clean that up and I could reuse this clasp. Um, 
you can throw it in another lot if you want to. I reuse most of what I can. Um, so another tip I'll add is you can throw a bunch of different clasps together and sell a used lot of clasps as well. So now you've got all these beads taken apart. What I like to do is think about um, size differences, color differences. So we've got seed beads and then we have these really pretty coin or lentil shaped beads. Now I find these really interesting and then these smaller ones are very similar. They have like this foil uh, metallic look to them. So you can kind of get those beads out and sort them out. Now I could even sell just, just these together. Let's see how many we have. That was everything. Now I have seed beads left, these worn glass beads, and then these metal, metal spacers. So this is a very small lot of beads, but I think they're interesting enough that they would sell on their own. Yeah, this may not seem like a lot, but I've actually done really well selling really small lots of beads. I'll show a recent small bead lot that I sold recently. It's really important you know what type of bead it is so you can be very descriptive. Say how many pieces there are and weigh it and give measurements of the beads. So you can get as technical as you want with these beads or you can do just a more general lot. You could sell all these beads together and that would be great as well. Um, the lot that I sold, they I did a Google Lens because I wasn't quite sure what kind of bead I had, but I thought they were very interesting and come to find out they were a check glass with a peacock finish. And I kind of looked at similar listings and I thought, you know what, I think I have enough here. I can sell them on their own. And I, I did don't remember the exact price but I'll show it on the screen so I mean that's just that just goes to show really small things can bring a profit it just it depends on how much time you want to put in it you can go real small lots you can go you know a little bit bigger um, either way to maximize your prop profits as opposed to selling one giant junk lot with everything in it. Some type of necklaces I know everybody has seen when you buy junk lots are these wired floating necklaces. It's like everybody's like nightmare when they find these necklaces. I'm sure people enjoy wearing these but most times the wires are so bent and they tangle up everything and they're a nightmare but sometimes they have really interesting beads and these have some glass faceted beads on here and then these interesting metallic beads. So again, you can cut the strings off, take the beads off. Now, some of these have crimps, so you'll just have to cut, you know, again on the other side, take the beads off. This one would take a little more time, but I think the beads would be worth uh, getting off. Here's just some other examples. There's not very many on this one. This one has a lot more. It has some acrylic beads. So another idea is if it seems just too much work to cut these up like these, you can just sell a small lot of all these beaded necklaces not taken apart and sell it that way. You might not get as much money for it, but that is uh, a possibility. Now, here are some other examples of things with amazing beads, but they're not wearable. 
So these are stretch and they've just been overstretched. The cords yellowed and old, but look at these amazing faceted beads. Like they're great. Someone could reuse these. There's really nothing wrong with them. So again, just cut them, cut them up, uh, take, take all the beads off, bag them up and sell them as is. Now, another tip I'll share is a lot of these spacer beads. So these are interesting. They're like little charms, little flowers. I do sell the spacer beads and metallic beads separately. And I will advertise them as such spacer bees because that's normally what people use them for. These I might would even put in a lot themselves. These are rhinestone spacer beads. People really like using those. So, you know, that's another example. And then I would put all these clear ones together. These are also great because they actually are already on a pin and they have a loop there, a jump ring, so you could sell those as charms, dangles, um, things like that so that people people can find these that, that want to search for beads already on a pin. So another thing you can do is, I, I come across this a lot, I'll get a really interesting vintage beaded necklace, but it's broken and you know you've got all the beads there or most of them together so another great idea is if you don't want to spend time restringing these is just make a small lot of broken vintage beaded necklaces and someone would love to restring these and bring them back to life and I would include everything. I'd include the original clasp, any of the findings, even the string, like, you know, some people want to use all the original items to redo the necklaces. So that's another great idea. So I hope you guys really enjoyed that and learned something. I do plan on doing more videos about how to sell broken junk jewelry type videos because there is money to be made. I make money on selling craft pieces, broken pieces, so I I see value in just about anything. Um, I love I love giving things a new life and I know a lot of other people do. Um, I feel like with the way the economy is, you know, people want to be frugal and try to reuse what they have and care for what they have so that it lasts longer. I think that's really just really important life skill to have in general. So I hope you guys took something away from that. And last week I did a video just on how to sell single uh, earrings. So if you haven't watched that, I'll have that linked below. And like I said, I'll have, I have plans to do more videos like this. Um, there's a lot of different things to consider and look at and maximize your profits when it comes to junk jewelry. So I also decided to share my eBay store. I have that down in the description and also in my about me page. I kind of rebranded it to reflect my my YouTube and my Etsy page just to kind of kind of have it all cohesive. So you guys want to check that out. That is all I have for you guys today and I will see you guys next week.